Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to use one of my favorite GPS units of all times, the Bendix King KLN90B. Now, one of the questions that you're probably going to have immediately as soon as you see this video is, what are we flying? Of course, this is the Black Isle, the lovely, lovely, lovely Beechcraft Duke here. And now we're here at Wyndham, Connecticut, in case you're interested in that aspect. And the other thing you're going to ask is, how do I install this thing? It's blank when I use it. Well, the good news is, is there's this lovely website where you can actually localize and grab the file that you need here by typing in KLN90MSFS. And it gives you this nice little link here. And incredibly, if you go to the releases page, this is what I love about it. There's literally just a folder. And now what you do is you grab that, you download it, and then when you're done, you just sort of pop it right over here in your community packages folder. And that's it. That's how hard it is to install. Uh, one of the things you have to remember when you are installing it, though, is pretty pleased with the cherry on top. Make sure you go ahead and uh, restart Flight Sim before you try to proceed any further. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So when you first boot this unit up, you're going to sit here going, where's my colors? Where's my touchscreen? Uh, we have none of that on this particular unit. This is actually a unit that I'm very familiar with because the first time I ever flew a solo plane, this was the unit we actually had in the plane, which is actually kind of neat that I get to see something from the 90s make it to 2020s. So the way this works is really, really straightforward until you get complicated. I'll show you what I mean later, though. And the cool thing is we have two different sets of knobs. And I, what you'll notice with each sets of knobs, we have more knobs. As a matter of fact, you'll notice we have a small knob, we have a big knob, small knob, big knob, push button. Uh, the reason this is important is because uh, whenever we're doing any work with this particular device, you always have to keep in mind that we're going to be working with the big knob for pages or a fields, the little knob for changing values. If you always approach it that way, you're never really going to get confused with this particular unit. So for example, when you first boot up this unit, you're going to notice this gives us the date and time, gives us all this other stuff, altitude, and it says barrow. You have to tell it it's barometric pressure before you're able to actually start the unit. Now, one of the things I can do is I can confirm the barometric pressure today is 2992 because I didn't change it. Now, if I did change you would have to punch it in here. Otherwise, some of your or units will not be as accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to use the big knob to go over to where it says the word improve. And you'll notice the system is smart enough to warn you to press ENT, which is the enter key. What it will do is it'll yell at you that you're going to be losing your database pretty soon. I'm going to press the enter key like that. And then it's going to begin synchronizing. Uh, one of the things that you do is when people first boot up this little component here is you're going to notice that it takes a very, very long time for it to actually synchronize and find satellites. Oh, there it goes. That was quick. And the reason it was so quick is because I told it to be quick. So the first thing I recommend doing other than going to MSG, <laughs> really, is to go over here and you'll notice that we have one of these pages. And one of the options for the pages is the setup page. The way this display works is the stuff on the left side can correspond with the stuff on the right side if they're the same. This is the major page, minor page, major page, minor page. And the reason that's useful is you'll notice if I crank this, I'm changing the minor page. If I crank this, I'm changing the major page. This stuff is for information, typically. This is usually for settings and tweaking. So for example, let me go to uh, this page here. I'm going to use the big knob here. I'm going to click all the way until I get into my different pages. You'll notice there's an other options. You'll notice there's a set options. Now, if I want to, I can come in here and I can actually change what page my set is. There's a lot of really good stuff here. One of my favorite things to do is if you uh, basically scroll around here a little bit, kind of choo-choo through it, you can see you can upgrade your database. But more importantly, setting page 10, if you can left click, lets you change the GPS speed. Now, if I want to change this again, if you're first booting this up, it won't say fast here. Press the cursor key, and then you can use the small knob to change it between real and fast. Uh, when you're done, of course, notice there's no ENT. You just press cursor again to shut that off. And that's why this uh, to reverse video over here on the left. Highly recommend doing that because it's going to make your life a little bit simpler as far as getting this thing all booted up and all ready to go. The next thing I like to tell people to do is when you come down here, a lot of times people are like, um, I have no idea. Where, oh my God, what do I do? What do I do? How do I get this thing set up? There's really two big philosophies, and it really depends on how complicated your flight plan is really going to be. By the way, if you're curious, if you came over here and you set this, uh, it'll yell at you. Don't worry about it. If you set this to nav and you actually would change this to page two, notice we um, it kind of combines the two. It's kind of neat how that works. Especially if you go to nav page five and you go to nav page five, you get a big window. It's kind of cool how this thing works, but we'll get to all that. But the important thing is, is you have to know what kind of flight you're going to be flying before you start getting carried away. The reason I say that is the simplest way to utilize this unit is to reach over here where it says the direct key, click on it, go ahead and use the little knob to change the values, the big knob to change the fields, and pick where you're going. 
for example, if I wanted to go uh, keep it nice and easy today, let's say I wanted to, to go over to Bradley International Airport. So I could go, okay, again, I'm using the big knob to go to the next page. I could go to Bravo, come to this one. I could set this one to Delta, thankfully. Uh, Bradley is a really easy runway to get to. Be careful not to go like six pages. Sometimes it's easier to actually click the mouse than to just roll the mouse button. But you can see, I can see, I've never heard of that airport before. KPDL, I press my enter key, notice it flashes to prompt you. Press enter. It's like, is this the one you wanted? And if you're happy with it, you press enter again. Now, as soon as you do that, you'll notice everything automatically updated on my display. And now I'm basically ready to rock. I can see I've got some information as far as where I need to go. I've also got my present position kind of all displayed. And uh, whoever was before me on this thing jacked the brightness way too high. You can see how the letters kind of glow funny. I'm actually going to turn that down just a little bit. Eh, it's too far. Good enough. The reason this is useful now is we can actually start navigating. And what I like to do is I like to set my navigational pages in a way that makes sense. Some people like to set navigation one on this side and navigation one again, I'm using the little knob here, to set this so you can get kind of a generic display. This looks very familiar if you recognize the um, smaller GPS units. There's your distance, GS, our bearing is a tree 12 down here in the bottom right corner. We're basically ready to go. Now, if I wanted to, of course, I could also show a video, or not video, a little map. And so I could go over here to page five, and you can see here that it'll actually show you where we are, where we need to go, our destination, this is going to be our zoom level, and this is going to be our current kind of heading. Uh, one of the things that makes everybody crazy about this unit is when you first boot this sucker up, it's going to be north up. If you actually want to change that setting, you can come over here to the cursor button, press it, and you'll see that it gives you the ability to change desired track. You can set it to current track. You can also set it to heading, which is where the plane is currently pointing. So you can actually see now that I'm pointing in a better direction. The other thing you can change, which is really fun. Notice, by the way, the uh, airport airplane position is not very confident, very accurate. You'll also notice if I come down here and I crank this, I can change the level of zoom. Now, if I want to, I can zoom way in. No, there's no autopilots or anything like that. Unfortunately, like I said, kind of part of the fun they like to say. But uh, the cool thing that we have here is, again, you can set it to whatever you feel appropriate for that particular one. And when you're happy with it, you just press the cursor button and then it goes ahead and selects whatever you want. Now, one of the cool things here is if you set this to page five and both sides is page five, you get a nice little view that looks like this. And it's actually not a bad view. I think it's actually pretty cool. Now, what everybody likes to do is like to push the cursor button here and you'll notice the cursor button just kind of gives you that. And now uh, we can actually go around and we can change the fields now if you want to be that way. So for example, see where it says TK, I can actually highlight that, crank this and change the actual fields that I'm looking at in this particular component. So in this case, let's say I want to do heading instead of desired track. I can just come over here to bearing, press that, press cursor, and now it will actually show me what my bearing is in addition to my desired track. And again, again, push cursor up here, go up to this page right here. We can do ETA, we can do cross track error, we can do VNAV. You can post all your other components on, again, estimated time on route. I press cursor to go ahead and get out of that mode. So you can see this is the basic utilization for it. Now it's just a matter of flying. And again, now you can sit here and really, really crank it. One thing I really, really love is if you press the cursor button on this side in the full screen view, you can actually go down and change the track mode again, if I decide to. Again, I like, I'm a huge fan of heading up, but again, you do whatever works for you. And you can see my little Danny airplane just sort of chilling here, facing that general direction, ready to rock. Again, fantastic unit. So now you're sitting there going, oh, this is bad. I could just get into the plane and uh, basically cruise around. As a matter of fact, with this particular plane, once you're in GPS mode over here, we can actually feed that information directly into our HSI. Uh, keep in mind, our HSI isn't going to update this needle like it does like on a G1000. We have to actually go over here and say, oh, we need to go to 312 degrees. So we'd have to actually come in here and crank the sucker to actually get it to what we want it to be. 310, 311, 312, boop, right there. And now you can see that works actually pretty well for us. Of course, we're not going to have anything on any of the nav pages because it's not a VOR. But you get the gist as far as that goes. Now you're sitting here going, wow, that was actually pretty, that wasn't bad. I thought this was going to be kind of a scary unit to use. Oh, <laughs> where does it get fun? It gets fun if you want to do more than one like on your flight plan. Let me show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to crank this so that it switches the page to flight plan zero. Uh, just as a general tip, uh, when you're doing any stuff like this, I generally try to keep it flight plan. Uh, again, you will notice on the left side that, again, we're not going to have access to flight plan on the right. This is for entering. This is for viewing, if you want to kind of think of it another way. So what I like to do is like set this like nav one or something just to kind of get it out of the way. So flight plans. <sighs> oh, boy, here we go. You asked for it. Flight plans are a little weird. And uh, one of the things you'll notice is we have several flight plans we can actually dial in, which is a super cool tool because your co-pilot can be sitting there cranking flight plans in for you as you're cruising around. But uh, for us, again, we're gonna use flight plan zero. The easiest way to think about this is flight plans allow you to kind of change what page you're on. Now, if I wanted to load flight plan zero at any time, I could actually press this so that I save it. So I'm gonna go to flight plan zero real quickly here. It's looking pretty groovy real fast. I'm gonna press the cursor option. You notice it gives me the ability to enter a waypoint. 
So now let's say I wanted to go up to Bradley again, but I want to actually do it a little differently this time. I want to take the Hartford VOR. Yes, I know I'm the world's most creative person, but hey, write what you know, as they say. So I'm going to go ahead and do HFD. Again, this is a VOR station. This is not a waypoint. So now what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and press the Enter key to confirm it. You'll notice it says, is this what you're talking about? And I said, yeah, actually it is. And you'll notice it automatically switches to item number two here. So now what I can do is I can come in here and I can actually just sit here and go ahead and dial in my next waypoint. Uh, let's say we're going up to Barnes, for example. So I could do K, uh, and nobody will see it during the watching me dial things into the GPS stage. Press enter, enter. And again, I've got myself a handy dandy little flight plan kind of basically going ready to go. And you can see just how handy this is. Now, my favorite thing here is let's actually activate this flight plan. And there's a couple of different ways to kind of do that. And again, you can see the different modes. If I want intro flight plan position, I can press enter to do a new one. I can press clear if I want to go ahead and get rid of something as well. If you end up chopping up your flight plan into a million little pieces, don't worry, nothing bad will happen. You can actually come in here and put a window, which would be my starting particular point. Shut the cursor off again, depending on what you want to do. So one of the cool things here is I can go to Hartford now, HFD, and I can now press the direct button. And you will notice it will automatically allow me to select that particular position. It also will tell you the frequency in case you're one of those people. Now, if I press enter, you're going to notice there's a brand new arrow here. You're also going to get MSG, which is delicious. And you'll see here, it says, please adjust navigational course to 264 degrees. And uh, it doesn't do it with that particularly awful accent, which is just downright offensive, but it does provide us with the critical information that uh, we can utilize for the purposes of updating our little HSI ready to rock. So now that that's been done, I can close the MSG page and you can actually see that this is ready to go and basically well, let's go kind of a thing like that. And now we can course, it will automatically cycle between the different waypoints as we're screwing around and kind of doing all the different stuff that we need to do, which is really, really cool if you ask me. Now, whoa, <laughs> I've done that so many times. Bill, Bill. Again, you can always press the cursor button and that'll immediately correct it. Now, one of the interesting things you probably observed is this thing that says load flight plan zero. It's actually asking you a question here. Now, the cool thing is if I use my cursor and go up there and press enter, uh, it's gonna ask you, are you sure you wanna do that? You're gonna notice nothing happens here because this would be loading this into flight plan zero. So um, of course we had nothing there. So we didn't overwrite our flight plan, which is actually pretty good. Now there's one other fun thing you can actually do here. And if we actually go over to BAF here, and if I press the, and whoop, <laughs> I'm gonna do that about a thousand times today. Sorry, everybody. We can actually go to the flight plan and uh, there's a bunch of other options that we would have depending on what version we have of this particular device. Uh, one of the things you probably see here again, you can go through all the different components. You can see kind of getting your direct stuff. Everything is pretty much ready to rock. So I'm gonna go back to my first page here. I'll get out of the flight plan now that I've absolutely crippled the darn thing. And if I go all the way to my, again, you can go through all the settings or some million different things, navigate database only. If we come all the way over here, of course, uh, you can see that our flight plan has been updated and all of our navigational data has been changed too. Now, one of the cool things you probably observed is on the right-hand side, none of this information is updated. Now you can see it's actually stayed the same as in a flight that I was doing, basically experimenting with this. If I wanna actually change this, you can actually press the cursor key, select the option that you wanna do, and you can actually type in exactly what you need to do. So, you know, if I wanna do a kind of a KB, and again, we're going to Bath here, Barnes Air Force Base, boop, boop. And now I can go ahead and press the enter key. I can shut off cursor and all the data is now very visible. You can see what runways we have available. You can see all the different lengths for everything that you need. You've got all your frequencies. Unfortunately, we have no ability to go press cursor and select one and actually activate it and basically choo-choo over to whatever particular custom component that we want. Now, you probably also noticed that there are several different options over on the left-hand side that give us all sorts of other functionality. Uh, these are definitely things for a different video because some of these get a little complicated. Uh, some of them, of course, under the other options, again, you can actually program your own flight plans. It'll do fuel calculations for you. It'll actually do fuel flow, tell you how much air, it'll give you air data in here. Everything is really, really sophisticated depending on what you're trying to achieve. You can also do trip planning in here, which is a really, really fun. Again, some of this is gonna be a little limited on the basic design that we have. You've got your flight plan capability, which is absolutely awesome. And of course, you have all your navigational pages. But as you can see, it's a relatively straightforward unit. Once you kind of get uh, kind of past the, uh, I don't want to call it weirdness because that's kind of mean for how nice this thing is. It's kind of tricky as far as that goes. It's like desired white plane. Now this is kind of fun to play with, watch this. So I'm actually going to do this real quickly here. I'll press enter to compute CTR waypoints. Isn't that awesome? And now we can go ahead and you can actually do all sorts of interruption ones. It's so awesome. You can actually do calculations. But again, those are all things for other pages, uh, other days, just on because of how much work it would take to kind of uh, bang these all out in one video. But again, this should be more than enough to kind of get you started. 
Now, the one thing I will leave you with is uh, people like to say, okay, so you've shown me kind of the basics here, and you actually had a video from 2015 on the same unit in X-Plane. Is there anything that you uh, kind of recommend uh, when you're kind of getting sort of the swing of this thing? Uh, the one thing I would always recommend uh, whenever you're using this is uh, when you are using this functionality, my personal favorite thing to do is to leave it on nav one on the side and nav five on the side. To me, this is just the simplest way to do it. Uh, the other thing that I like to do, of course, as you already noticed, is switch it to it. So it's heading up, so it's nice and visual. Some people like to use this unit exclusively in this view. I think that's perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, you're probably going to be spending most of your time in this view anyway, just because of how incredibly simple it is. But like I said, it's a relatively good unit. It will work great. Um, pretty pleased with the cherry on top. Double check to make sure you press GPS and double check to make sure you're on the correct navigational input before you attempt to fly any flights with it. Enjoy.